Time now for Iron Africa coming up. Zimbabwe's opposition leader promises a year of action on the streets. As he blames the president for a hunger crisis and sliding economy. We'll have all the latest from Harare. Meanwhile, major firms and banks scrambling to cut ties with Isabel dos Santos amid the ongoing fallout from the Luanda leaks investigation into Africa's richest woman. The UN sounds the alarm bell over the threat to food supplies posed by swarms of locusts in East Africa. Thanks for joining us. We start, however, with Burkina Faso, where the government says 36 civilians have been killed in what it's terming an act of terrorism. A statement saying our militants attacked people at a market in the village of Alamu in uh, uh, northern San Matenga province before uh, burning that market to the ground. Burkina Faso has uh, seen a series of attacks since 2015 when unrest spread across the border from neighbouring Mali. France has been leading efforts to take the fight to jihadist groups in the Sahel region. Now, Zimbabwe's main opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, has uh, threatened a year of demonstrations against President Emerson Mangawa's government. That as he uh, addressed supporters at a rally in the capital, Harare, this Tuesday. MDC leader still believes uh, he was robbed of victory in 2018's elections. His call for mass action coming amid a worsening economic and hunger crisis, with inflation now running at over 500 per cent and half the population in need of food aid. More, I'm joined by correspondent Ryan Truscott in Harare. Thanks very much for talking to us, uh, Ryan. How will uh, Mr Chimita's call for demonstrations be received, do you think? Well, he said it would be a decisive year for dealing with Zimbabwe's challenges. He, he did threaten protests to push for what he termed a people's government and an end to corruption. But I, I think his speech wasn't quite as militant as some might have expected. Uh, he appealed to the international community for humanitarian assistance for Zimbabwe. He also said his party would be uh, law-abiding in its protests. I, I should also point out that today's rally went ahead smoothly, uh, despite predictions that it would be stopped by the police. And how much of an appetite is there for protest uh, in the country? And how much of an appetite is there for protest? Uh... Well, that, that's a question that's been asked for of Zimbabweans for the past two decades. We've, we've seen many violent crackdowns against opposition protests since 2000. Uh, that's often cited as a reason why people don't turn out in large numbers. Uh, whether the deteriorating economic situation now uh, will give people an impetus to go out onto the streets isn't really clear. But memories are still fresh of a, a security crackdown last year in January against street protests, uh, during which around a dozen people were killed, uh, many more injured and arrested. So generally we see opposition leaders here wavering between calls for protests and, and calls for job stairways. Sometimes the stairways have been more successful in just shutting cities down rather than seeking confrontation with well-armed police. You're talking about the economy just there. How hard is life for Zimbabweans right now? Well, economically, things are dire. Uh, half the population is in need of food aid. Uh, we, but we are in an odd situation, a kind of a, a hiatus. We were told to brace for job action by the civil servants, but the, the government appears to have found money to pay them, so uh, so-called cushioning allowances. And that appears to have st staved off the, the possibility of any full-blown strikes for now, including by teachers who, who form the bulk of the civil service. The, the salaries being paid to teachers are paltry. Uh, the least paid gets the equivalent of around 40 euros a month. So although teachers are, are presenting themselves at school, uh, they're not doing much teaching as far as we can tell. Also, annual inflation, as you mentioned, it's around 521%. Uh, and that's playing havoc with prices. It also means that people can't afford to buy food to make up for, for failed harvests. And the, the, the EU has just said that it will be paying an extra 16 million euros towards easing the food crisis here. Um, at the same time, we're getting anecdotal evidence that people are moving from urban areas to rural areas where less money is needed to survive. So things are, are pretty hard and there's no prospect of them getting better soon. Ryan Truscott, thanks very much for joining us. Now, to the continued fallout from the Luanda leaks investigation into Africa's richest woman, 
Isabella dos Santos, daughter of Angola's former president, is battling allegations she built up a 2.2 billion euro fortune through corruption, nepotism and the siphoning off of public funds. The spotlight increasingly falling on some of the big-name multinationals and accountancy firms that may have helped her. Head of London-based PwC has promised an investigation. Meanwhile, Portuguese bank Eurobeek, which was part owned by Dos Santos, says she and her associates have now been banned as customers. Well, Andy Baldwin is a global managing partner at EY, who's a Portuguese operation audited one of Dos Santos' firms. France 24, Stephen Carroll asked him whether their internal checks had failed. No, you, you've got to recognise this is a fast-moving, fast-developing de uh, situation. Like any organisation, we all look at our policies and procedures. In this particular case, we actually audited two entities that the individual was a shareholder in rather than an outright control. If you look at what happened in South Africa, which is obviously a very well-documented case around the Guptas, our policies and procedures, they were very clear. We didn't work for the Guptas. We didn't want to do any work for the Guptas. And actually, of the 550 companies controlled by the Guptas, uh, EY had not actually worked for any of those organizations over the last five or six years. So we'll take stock of the situation that's evolving in, uh, in Angola, take stock of what uh, we currently do around our procedures. And if we need to make any changes on client acceptance, uh, we will do. Elsewhere, the Nigerian Navy fired shots in the air as it carried out the latest massive action in the country's economic hub, Lagos. That is, they cleared some uh, 10,000 people from the waterfront community of Tarkwa Bay. Lagos has seen repeated forcible evictions of late as developers look to cash in on high-value locations. The military saying, however, the uh, official reason for the mission uh, was stopping the looting of nearby oil pipelines. South Africa's embattled national airlines cancelled a string of flights as it struggles for financial survival. Routes from Johannesburg to Cape Town and Durban and international services to the German city of Munich are affected. South African Airways entered a form of bankruptcy protection last month. It is running short on cash after the government failed to provide millions of euros in promised emergency funding. It's one of several state-run companies that are currently in financial trouble. Situation which has hit the country's credit rating hard. The United Nations has sounded the alarm bell over the threat to food supplies posed by swarms of locusts in Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia. The UN's Food and Agriculture Agency is saying the current weather conditions favour the rapid reproduction of the crop-devouring insects threatening the entire East Africa sub-region. France 24's Nicolas Jamar has more. East Africa is facing its most serious outbreak of locusts in 25 years. This farmer in Ethiopia is desperately trying to get rid of the insects. They fly together by the millions and devour crops. We're using three methods to chase the locusts away. Firstly, we light fires because the smoke will chase them away. Secondly, we use sticks and run through the crops. Thirdly, we wave our scarves. We make noise with cans and plastic bottles. There were similar scenes here in Kenya. This week, the United Nations said ravenous swarms of desert locusts threatened to ravage East Africa. The consequences will be far-reaching. The vegetation you see in front of you is shared by goats, cows and camels. So the more locusts feed on them, the more they'll leave them bare. So we can foresee a drought coming because our livestock will be left with nothing to feed on. The authorities are using airplanes to spray pesticides. The UN's Food and Agriculture Organization estimated one swarm in Kenya to be 40 kilometers wide by 60 kilometers long. It said hundreds of thousands of acres of crops have been destroyed in this region, where the food security situation is already fragile. The FAO believes that if nothing is done, the number of locusts could grow 500 times by June. It said it needed $70 million in financial donations for urgent pest control. The UN organization added that South Sudan and Uganda are not currently affected, but that they are at risk. Finally, 12 tigers and five lions have been relocated to a sanctuary in South Africa after being rescued from circuses in Guatemala. The NGO Animal Defenders International saying the cubs and adults had been subjected to years of solitude and confinement. More than 200 big cats have now been rescued since Guatemala joined nearby Peru, Bolivia and Colombia, banning the use of animals in circuses in 2018. That's it for Iron Africa. Thanks for watching.
In India, the Citizenship Amendment Act is a new law that makes access to citizenship easier for refugees persecuted for their religion. As a secular state, the country is facing rising anger and widespread demonstrations. Muslims are clearly being targeted and are excluded from the measure. It's so close to the, the deeded citizenship that we saw and that happened in Germany. It's anti-constitutional. We will show that we are not afraid of you. As all eyes turn to the Indian Supreme Court, the future for all Muslim citizens is more uncertain than ever. Reporters presented by Mark Owen on France 24 and France24.com. I remember as a young journalist reporting on the closure of a factory, and I was told the factory's closed, that's the end of the story. But I spoke to people, I spoke to the security guards, I spoke to the workers, I spoke to the trades unions, I spoke to the people in the community, and I learned there was a different story. The story I was being told was the one I was supposed to publish. The story I found was a huge cover-up and a huge intrigue. And eventually, by exposing that, I actually managed to save those people's jobs. So I'm proud of that. And I'd urge every journalist to go further, go deeper, ask more questions, and don't just take the first thing that people tell you for the truth, because very often, the truth is way beyond that. Find that truth. Liberté, égalité, actualité. New technology. The latest innovation and its impact on a digital society. Tech 24. Presented by Julia Seeger and Dan and Jay Kadilka on France 24 and France24.com.